From our studios in Rockefeller Center, here again is Jane Pauling. Seems to happen every Christmas, one particular toy takes off like a rocket and moving almost as fast, frenzied parents desperate to find it. So what's the next bestseller? One toy maker is betting on a new super heroine. She's from the same Japanese company that brought you the Power Rangers. Here's Lucky Severson. They make one out of every three cars that Americans drive. And most of the cameras and TVs, Walkman and VCRs. And now they've invaded our toy industry. American kids or their parents bought a billion dollars worth of mighty Morphin Power Ranger toys in 18 months. Merry Christmas. Last Christmas, they scoured shelves and even offered bribes for toy rangers. And now, heads up, this blonde bombshell and her girlfriends have invaded the U.S. She's called Sailor Moon. And she's the latest hot item out of the brain factory of this man, Makoto Yamashina. See, just a girl's communication. No boys. Yamashina is the president of Bondi, the biggest threat to the American toy industry in memory. We're at the International Toy Fair in Tokyo. Distributors from all over the world come here to find what's new, what's up next in the $18 billion a year industry. Bondi is now the world's third largest toy maker, aiming to be number one by the year 2000. What's going to make you more successful than most other companies in this business? Because we concentrate on the, the trend, the, the, the characters. This is a comic crazed country. Kids and grown-ups bought 554 million comics last year. When a comic gets hot, popular, Bondi rushes in and licenses the characters, makes the toys, and then sponsors the television series with the toy characters. How do you change your programs for, for the Japanese audience to the American audience? Very simple. The costume is the same, the content is the same, but the... Uh, the casting stars is uh, different from American stars. Bondi's blonde Sailor Moon and her four girlfriends invaded the United States in September. These are Power Rangers who can be sweet and innocent one minute, tough and sexy the next. Now, does Sailor Moon here in Japan have blonde haired? Yes, from the beginning, yes. I have not seen too many Japanese girls who have blonde hair. So that's why the dream, you know, uh, the Japanese girl sees the black hair, but uh, she would like to be blonde. The creator of Sailor Moon is a young woman with black hair who's fresh out of college, Naoki Takeuchi. In a country where women still have their place and it's almost always behind a man, she's created a hit comic where all the heroes are women. There has never been anything like it before, female superheroes fighting villains. And if it makes girls feel good and want to see more, then I'm happy. Comics have been very good to Naoki. She's a millionaire whose hardest decision most days is whether to drive her Ferrari or her Porsche. When she does worry, it's over the changes they're making to Sailor Moon for the American audience, toning down her sexuality. She'll be wearing more clothes, and her TV programs won't have the sexual banter of the Japanese version. Drop that crystal! It's Sailor Moon! <laughs> Projected Sailor Moon sales for the U.S. this year, $150 million. Dreams for the kids, nightmares for American toy makers. Sailor Moon may have superpowers, but the superheroine of this Christmas season has been Holiday Barbie. The voice is from Sailor Moon. Is that right? We have uh, Sailor Jupiter here, yeah. who's uh, Susan. And Stephanie is Sailor <laughs> Venus. And just holding up these pretty pictures. Yeah. Can I get you guys to do something? Just, uh, like, interact. Like, as, as, as Sailor Jupiter and Sailor Venus. Be, be <laughs> actresses and come up with an impromptu Sailor Venus, Sailor Jupiter scene. And then we'll... we'll yeah. Just hold up the pictures and you can shake the pictures and all like, hey, 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 Oh, I see. Okay. Improvise something quickly. All right, okay. Um, uh, let's begin it again. On let's scene. see. Okay, uh, Venus. <laughs> Venus, where <laughs> is Sailor Moon? I have no idea. What are you talking about? Was she at school? She wasn't studying. I know that. I suspect the, uh, there's trouble coming. Trouble? 
Could it be Tuxedo Mask? I hope Tuxedo Mask's not in trouble. We always have to rescue him. I know. Well, I don't think that's right. I think he always rescues us, which I have a problem with. But anyway, <laughs> we won't get into that right now. We won't. <laughs> and then you come over here and I'll go, What? What are you talking about? And that's, uh... Is that Tuxedo Mask? That's Al Pacino walking in on that. <laughs> the only voice I can do. Was that Al? Sort oh. of. It's so authentic. Apparently it wasn't a good one. <laughs> Okay, so I, there, there's an event you guys are going to tonight. Yeah. Uh, what is it exactly? Um, it's UTARPA, which is the U of T uh, Anime, Anime and Role Playing Association. Association. Um, and they meet every month and they show hours and hours worth of anime. Um, starting, I think it's tonight around 6.30 and going until quite late. It's just non-stop Japanese animation. Right. Really? Yep. And I hear you guys have sort of become fans through this show, through doing work on this show. Yeah, I hadn't been exposed to anime before this, and now that I'm kind of part of an anime family, <laughs> I got more and more informed that I went to the last uh, Utarpa convention, and mm -hmm. it, it just blew my mind. The quality of the images, the yes. sophistication of the stories, the stuff we never see in North America. The, yeah. the Japanese very much are into, uh, like, they have comics there that there are no dialogue, and just, they do, like, simple storytelling. They're still into the stories, and whereas North America, we get all those comics where it's just... There's like no dialogue in the comic? Sometimes. Sometimes wow. they have those kind of just picture by picture, but, you know, these panels. So, yeah, I, I see what you mean. So, mm -hmm. so what is it about the anime that, that kind of excites you guys? I mean, is it the style? It's, I mean, it definitely has a look. Well, I have to say one thing. I, this is going to be my first uh, anime uh, uh, experience. I've okay. never. This is because Stephanie has. So it's has Stephanie. Been, Stephanie's the one, and so this uh, tonight will be the first time that I can actually um, find out what it's all about mm -hmm. firsthand myself. Because it'll hook you. I'm yeah? telling you. Okay. Know, we, we get tons and tons of these in. What do you think that is? It's 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 a big. It's a big, big thing. Yeah. Well, it's neat to find that out, because we don't know that. We have no idea really? about that. You no. have no idea? No, well, we didn't know when we started doing the series. We had no clue of the scale of this cult. We just had no idea. Yeah. Yeah, well, the, I actually, maybe in the beginning, no, nobody really knew, because it wasn't... But as soon as it came on the zone, I'll tell you, it was a huge, huge, huge hit. Well, it's that way in every country in which it appears. Did you know that? I don't know why. There's something uh, about it. I mean, I don't know. I always figured positive female role models. Well, it's also... Yeah. I, always, I always found it's, it's great. Also, yeah. you get um, an ongoing story, which you normally don't get in cartoons at all. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And that way you get to know the characters a whole lot better. They have this mythic history that goes on for centuries. It's a cosmic soap opera. Yeah. That's, That's what good. it is. You know what? It, it does opera. have that. It has, you know, see, you know, tuxedo mask. And it's, it's kind of... It's, and they're in school. Mm -hmm. You know, yeah. which is a, a big so thing. there's a normal life and then a... Uh, relate to. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And also Sailor Moon herself who is, uh, I think, I just, whenever I see that mouth of hers, you know, the way she's always going, like, yeah, 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 that, that incredibly zany animation, yeah. I love that, because that's, that's a real little girl, real little yeah, tomboy. Oh, yeah, I know. Okay, thank you very much. We have, Thanks. okay, Susan Roman and Stephanie Morgenstern, thank you very much for coming up, and Sailor Moon's coming up next. One extreme form of obsession with technology is the information junkie. They are people who are actually in love with information, and they first came to light in Japan according to Todd Southgate. Tokyo. Bright, busy, and very wired. It's no secret that Japan has a love affair with technology, but there's a growing subculture taking that romance to the limit. When I'm not riding the train or when I'm not eating or when I'm not bathing, I'm usually logged in and doing something with the computer. Hitoshi Doi is wired on information, specifically any information on Japanese animation known as anime. He's one of a growing number of data junkies called otaku. My wife always complains that I'm always on the computer, and well, I try not to um, sacrifice time with my my family. So right now I'm sacrificing sleep. So right now I get two or three hours of sleep a night. Hitoshi doesn't come across as strikingly odd. However, just get a load of what's going on in his head. I would like to have all the information about each character, uh, information about the items that they use, information about places that appear in the stories, uh, just about anything related to the story. The otaku seemed to me to be it's kind of a very pure expression of, of, of hunger for information, even if the information is essentially meaningless. Science fiction author William Gibson has always had a curious interest in Japan and its intimate relationship with technology. His latest literary journey is titled The Idoru. 
One of the novel's characters is an otaku, and he's described as a pathological techno-fetishist with social deficit. There's a spectrum with that kind of, kind of behavior. You can, you can have your fan, your otaku, and you can have your homicidal stalker. They're all on the same, they're all on the same continuum. And there is one alleged homicidal stalker in Japan, a man obsessed with pornographic anime. Some gruesome murders and his bizarre hobby gave the media something sensational to report. A once quiet culture of misfits quickly became big creepy news. This is like nerd city, big time. They're mostly male. I've never heard of a, a female otaku. And they're reputed to spend all their time in their bedrooms with their computers. It was the media in Japan that labeled Hitoshi and others like him the otaku. Translation, shut-in, fanatic, geek. People so utterly obsessed with information that they become withdrawn from society. It seems that information technologies have bred the ultimate fan. And now they're starting to emerge here. Hi, Greg. Hi, Hi. Todd. Great. Come on in. Great, thanks a lot. So you're the ultimate fan. I don't know if I really want to flatter myself that way, but uh, I, am, I am definitely obsessed with, uh, with uh, Ami Mizuno, Sailor Mercury. <laughs> you guessed it. Greg Taylor is also a big fan of anime. More specifically, this 20-year-old university student's love is... She's the lead character's sidekick in the popular children's cartoon called Sailor Moon. He's created an online shrine for the inked superhero, and he's constantly searching for new information to add to it. She wears glasses. In the, in the fourth season, she gets, she gets glasses, and... Uh, also in the fourth season when she powers up into uh, Super Sailor Mercury, she gets three earrings instead of just the one. So what are we going to see at this animation uh, festival tonight? Just uh, animation. So what's that? Oh, it's sort of my good luck talisman, I guess. My Mercury plushie I carry with me everywhere. At the University of Waterloo, Greg has gotten to know other Japanese Toon fans. Although their interests may not be quite as intense as Greg's, they gather periodically to watch imported anime. We watched all of Kimigoro Orange Road, all 48 episodes in oh one sitting. Oh my goodness. We watched 60 episodes of Maze on Ikoku in one sitting. Oh man. There are other anime interest groups as well as Sailor Moon fan clubs. As a matter of fact, Greg is Sailor Mercury's official representative in the Ottawa-based Sailor Moon fan club. However, face-to-face -face meetings among these groups are pretty rare. It would probably just be an interest if it weren't for... I guess the cyber community talking with all the other people about her, finding out all the information. In Greg's tiny room in Ottawa, a home away from home, his obsession is, well, hard to miss. A character uh, who, who kind of becomes her boyfriend uh, was named Greg, and that sort of intrigued me. Now, the time you spend online getting information about Sailor Mercury, is that something you really want to do, or is it something you feel you need to do? I, I suppose it's something I need to do. Um, you know, I, I, I want to find out more about her and find out... You know, the things I don't know and, and the little other things. In the old days, the fans really had to dig to get the information that they wanted on any particular subject. Now all they've got to do is log on, do a net search on anything, and boom, there you go. There's your information. A diehard fan, he's not. But Steve Mittler does have a keen interest in anime. He organizes Sailor Moon events for a living. So he knows the fans, and he knows their hunger for information. And of course, that information feeds the fuel of their fanaticism, because the more they know, the more they want to know. But it's just trivia. Yeah. No, it's, it's not gold. It's, it's banal information. To these people, it is very important. It's, it's just as important as food to them, because it, for them, it is food for that portion of their brain that says, I must know more I like I mean. huh? And nobody knows that better than Hitoshi Doi. His website is jammed with visitors. I've been taking stats on my website, and right now I'm getting over uh, one million per month. So I think the number of otaku is growing because of the internet. I don't think we'd have otaku without, without the digital world. I can't, Im I can't imagine it, too, because the, you, can wor you can work in absolute solitude. You can work in physical solitude, and that seems to be a big part of it. 
Do you feel you're missing anything in your life because you're spending so much time retrieving information about Sailor Mercury? Tough call. In a, in a way, it, it, it's preventing me from, from keeping in contact with, with some people because I, I'm devoting so much time to her. But in the, in the other respect, I'm meeting people and, and going out and, uh, and uh, to, to, to social gatherings and such because of her. So it, it's kind of a toss-up. So are the otaku and folks like Greg a fad or a foreshadowing? Are we all susceptible to the lure of information as our access to it? becomes unlimited. I think that probably accounts for our interest in the otaku is, a, is an underlying suspicion that we're becoming them. What will that do to a culture in general if you have more and more people going the route of the otaku, isolating themselves from anything else and just sort of playing in virtual communities? Look at how much time we spend as a, a culture watching television. That's not an interaction with any other human being. You're, you're having a virtual experience, and we've gotten used to that. We, we, we take it for granted. No one really feels too guilty about being a couch potato.セーラー生物一応タキシードじゃあ<笑> 
でも本当今までああいうキャラクターを描いたことなかったんで。あとにも先にもあんなキャラクターは海野くんだけじゃないかなと海野くんは本当は眼鏡を取ると一応ハンサムっていう設定なんですけど原作ものをアニメにするとすごくいろいろ難しいみたいなんですけれど一応セーラームーンはすごく私のイメージ通りに全部うまくいったっていうか色も声優さんもあとノリとかもすごくしっくりいったっていうか自分のイメージ通りだったんで本当は「セーラームーン」でそういうふうに、えっと、戦隊ものっていうか「ゴレンジャー」とか「ジュレンジャー」みたいに、うん、あそうそうなんか指令室から出動だみたいなそういうのの女の子版ができるとよかったんだけれどどうもうまく。できなくて<笑>あだからそこら辺からやっぱりセラムの発想が生まれたかなちょっとそれでどうしても女の子を5人出したかったしセーラームーンのレーザーディスク私もすごい楽しみにしてたので嬉しいです皆さんもぜひこれから続けて出るそうなので見てください。仲良しの方のセーラームーンもまだ続けるのでぜひ読んでください。This is pretty directly anime related. <laughs> yeah. It's a trailer for a、uh, project that was begun last year to, to see if we could do a, a American version of Sailor Moon. Yeah.、Uh, <laughs> it. Well, the, the reason I was involved is that、um, one of the ideas was to actually use Lightwave for、uh, computer generated backgrounds.、Um, And, and possibly for some vehicles as well. There's some very nice designs、uh, for those that we're going to be modeling.、Uh, we didn't really have time to do much of that in here. But this will show you some of the、um, some of the other ideas in the show. It's going to involve part live action,、uh, part cell animation, and,、uh, and some computer animation.、Um, anyway, it is, it is、uh, shelved for now. In, Uh, because it's cheaper to bring over the, the imported Sailor Moon and, and redub it.、Um, so, I don't know, let's,、right. let's have a look. <laughs> Please have an open mic. Is this dubbed or? <laughs> wow. Ha 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 ha! 
Reason I can. It may, uh, <laughs> may not be again. Nice. <laughs>